good day and welcome to my platform. On this platform, I share a short biography stories of different Nigerians from all walks of life, be it male or female. Nigerians from different professions like engineers, carpenters, politicians, tailors, accountants, mechanics, musicians, and lawyers. So far you are in Nigeria. My job is to talk about you for others to learn of the great ways which help our still hoping to shape a better world for the advancement of humanity in Nigeria and the world at large. So in this particular video, I'll be highlighting the biography of one of Nigerian human rights activists, politician, teacher and a leader in the person of Mrs. Sunlayo and Nicola Pukiti. Please do enjoy. Abigail Olufumilayo Thomas, popularly known as Fumilayo Rasunkuti, was born in Abiokuta of the state on 25th October 1900 to Daniel Ilumiwa Thomas and Lukusha Amoyeni Adil Sulu. Fumilayo was a granddaughter of a returned slave from West Africa country of Sierra Leone, who traded his ancestral home to Abiokuta of the state, Nigeria. From 1906 to 1913, Fumilayo attended St. John's Primary School in Abiokuta and thereafter, in 1914, she got admitted into Abiokuta Girls Grammar School, a Christian missionary school established by the British in 1908. She took her preceptor's examination in the school and teaches there till May 1919, when she was sponsored by her father cousin and the Church Missionary Society to further her studies in England. On getting to England, she was enrolled at Wicham Old College, where she studies music education domestic education and French. She returned to Nigeria in 1922 upon receiving a certificate at Wicham College. She was appointed a teacher at her alma mater, Abiokuta Girls Grammar School and taught there from 1923 to 1924. Reverend Israel Oludotun Ransom Kuti and Fumilayo Thomas got married on the 20th of January 1925 and were blessed with four children, one daughter, Dulu, and three sons. Fela, Beko, and Lukoi. Fumilayo, along with her son, Fela, in the 1970s, changed her husband's name, Ramson, decade after his death to Anikulapo, one who carries death in his pouch, or a warrior who carries powerful protection. Fumilayo was known as an educator and an activist throughout her career. She founded a nursery school in the 1930s and organized literary classes for women in the 1920s. She founded the first adult education program for women in Nigeria, the Social Welfare for Market Women, SWMW, to help educate working class women. She also started the Abeokuta Ladies Club, ALC, for educated women involved in charitable works. All these associations were founded in 1942. Fumilayo, along with her sister-in-law, Eniola Shoyinka, the mother of Nobel laureate winner, Wali Shoyinka, made the ALC and SWMW to form Abeokuta Women's Union. The union had a membership of over 20,000 members. Fumilayo led a protest in 1949 against the king of Ibaland, Oba Ademola II, over allegation of abuse of power by the king, who was granted the right to collect taxes from the Eda citizen by the British colonial law. The Abeokuta Women's Union forced the Alaki of Ibala, King Ademola II, through a series of matches, refusal to pay taxes, widespread measures of civil disobedience, and strike to relinquish his throne. Fumilayo Ransom Kuti's political activism led to her being called the doing of female rights activists in Nigeria, as well as the mother of Africa. She also oversees the successful abolition of separate tax rates for women. In 1953, the Eba Women's Union became the Federation of Nigerian Women's Societies, which subsequently formed an alliance with the Women's International Democratic Federation, of which Mrs. Ransom Kuti was made World Vice President in the same year. In 1947, the Nigerian Union of Students, led by Pumelayo's husband, Reverend Israel Ransom Kuti, became the National Council of Nigeria and the Cameroon, NCNC. She became a key member of the NCNC as a result of her close association with its roots and led the woman wing of the party in the western part of Nigeria. Fumilaya Rasam Kuti was often in conflict with Dr. Namdi Azikwe and the rest of the party leadership because she felt women were not well represented as men. She was eventually expelled from the party when she failed to win a federal parliamentary seat in the 1959 elections. However, her political activism never truly ended. Prior to independence, 
She founded the Commoners People's Party, CPP, in an attempt to challenge the ruling NCMC, ultimately denying them victory in her area. Her party earned 4,665 votes to NCNC 9,755, those allowing the opposition action group, which had 10,443 votes, to win. She was one of the delegates that negotiated Nigeria independence with the British government. Fumilaya traveled wide during the Cold War, owing to her status as the World Vice President of the Women's International Democratic Federation. She angered the American, British, and the Nigerian government with the establishment of contact with the Eastern Bloc of USSR, China, and Hungary during the war. She met with the founding father of the People's Republic of China, Mao Zedong, during her visit. For this, in 1956, her international passport was not renewed by the Nigerian authority, owing to fears that she could influence other women with her allegedly communist ideas and policies. America and Britain government refused her visa on the same ground. She was selected as a representative of the women of Nigeria as well as that of the Western region for the NCNC delegation that traveled to London in 1947. She was elected treasurer of the Exact Division of the party in 1956. In the 1950s, she was also one of the few women elected to the House of Chiefs, becoming an Oloi of the Yoruba people. At the time, the House of Chiefs was one of her homeland's most influential bodies. Fumalaya Oputi was the first Nigerian woman to drive a car and ride a motorcycle. She was Nigerian first ever representative at the Women's International Conference in the USSR 1963. She was one of the founders of the Nigerian Union of Teachers and the Nigerian Student Union. The University of Ibadan awarded her an honorary doctorate in law in 1968. And in 1970, she was declared the winner of the Linear Peace Prize. She died on April 13, 1978 in Lagos as a result of injuries sustained during an assault by the Nigerian military. She was buried in Abekuta on the 5th of May of the same year. <laughs>